This is a, an event for Year 10s of um, DSLVE Act Academy, the, one of the main schools in Daventry. Um, it's an awareness day, a drugs awareness day, where we come into the school at the school's invitation to help young people make informed decisions about lifestyle and rather than tell them not to drink or to take drugs, actually just to say this is the impact that they can have. You make your decisions based on what we tell you today. Jimbo's quite remarkable. Um, he's, he's, he describes himself as somebody that four or five years ago was complete and utter pain to the police. He served time in prison for cocaine-induced offences. Um, Jimbo had a really bad experience when, having come out of prison, uh, he went out on a binge on a weekend and ingested, inhaled and took anything that was white powderish, including medication that he shouldn't have taken. He went home, his mum thought he was drunk and let him sleep it off. In fact, he slipped into a coma and then spent from January 2013 to May 2014 either in intensive care or rehabilitation uh, and nearly died on three occasions. We're doing it here today because I'd like to help somebody at least one person to take it on board and not do what I've been through in my life. I look back at it now and I think, why did I do it? There's more to life than drugs. I see my mates smoking it, so I thought, I'll try it. Then I like the feeling of it, so I thought, I think I got bored of it. Then I was still smoking it, even though I got bored of it. Then. And they, 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 not, they, then they brought this coke out, so I thought, I'll try that then. He went out on the Friday night to a friend's house and um, he'd been drinking and taking coke that night, but because the cocaine had run out and there was no, nothing else, they, he just, well, him and someone else got some tablets and crushed the tablets up and Jimbo sniffed ten and took five. The other person took some as well, but he was sick apparently and nothing ever happened to him. And then um, Jimbo come home. Well, he took the tablets about five o'clock in the morning and he was feeling rough straight away as soon as he took them. And he come home about nine o'clock in the morning. And I said, he said to me, you okay? I said, yeah, you? He said, no, I feel rough. I thought, what's your fault? Well, I just thought it was a normal come down from the night before. And then all down that Saturday, he was in and out of consciousness on my bed, unbeknown to me, but he was dying. But I don't know, I just, now I look back at it and think, well, why didn't I know he'd overdose? Why didn't I get him to the hospital sooner? It was just, I don't know, just, I just thought it was a normal weekend. And then I put him to bed on the Saturday night and woke up on the Sunday morning and walked into his bedroom and just found him. Dead virtually on the floor, grey, fitting. I fell out of bed, didn't I? Yeah, he fell out of bed. I went in to check him, but because he was still on the floor, I thought oh, I'll leave him on the floor, he's safe on the floor. Put a quilt and a pillow there and just left him there for 11 hour, uh, nine hours. And then they phoned me on the Monday and said, I think you better come in and call the family because he's not going to make it through the night. So we all went up to the hospital on the Monday. And I just stayed there for the whole two weeks. It was in intensive care, never left his side. And just machines bleeping and them oh. saying that we're going to try and bring him out of the coma. And on the third time, they said, if they can't bring him out of the coma, that will be it. You'll have to turn the machine off. But I couldn't have turned the machine off. I don't know what they meant, like, turn the machine off. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, he did wake up. They took him off the um, machine and he was doing it all on his own. And they said, we've just got to really wait for him to wake up now. And they say that if you let, let him listen to tunes and songs that they've listened to or they know, it might bring him around a bit. So his little brother had a headphone in and Jimbo had a headphone in. And then I was looking out the window and heard the door go. And I looked round and said to his dad, where's Theo gone? He said, look at Jimbo. I said, yeah, but where's Theo? He said, man, look at Jimbo. I looked at Jimbo and he was awake. His eyes were wide open. He woke up to this song. And the song is so special to us now. It's what um, song is it? The Lumineers, Hey Ho. Every time we hear that, it's just a choker. But that's our song for him waking up. A year or two ago, I was fighting for my life. I didn't think I'd ever be able to produce a baby, especially because Mum said the, the hospital, uh, hospital said to him, Mum, you might be a cabbage. You, you might have to wipe his m mouth. You might be wiping his bum or things like that. You might be wearing nappies and that. And then I'm out the best way I could ever ever be. I've produced a baby. Oh, I'm so proud of myself because the way I am now. I was in and out of prison all the time. The police didn't like me. And now, 
they see me in town and so happy for me, it's like shake my hand every time they see me. Just standing with that many people and since and standing in front of that many people and, and try and help people. If they don't listen to me, they don't have to, but the amount of people have said to me, I'm so proud of you. I think you, you've, you've um, touched me. So I think they've listened. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did.